In this video, we're talking about five crazy things you didn't know about Fusion. Or maybe you do know about them, but we need to at least talk about how cool they are. Let's go. First thing I'm gonna come out with right from the gate is that Fusion is actually really good for motion graphics. Are you kidding me? There's a lot of scuttlebutt around people saying, Fusion is very nice for visual effects. Probably, probably one of the best tools around, but it's not built for motion graphics. I don't know why the person talks like that. And I'm like, What? For instance, here's an example of something you would typically think about making in After Effects. It has all these different elements and textures and animation, and it just feels like this is something that's built up in a bunch of layers. And the truth is, it is. But it was created in Fusion. Here's the node graph right here. And even though this might look complicated, it's really just about the same amount of work as it would take to make something like this in After Effects. You'd still start with a background, and you'd bring in various elements from whatever source you want. Actually got these from Motion Array, more on them in a minute. And we're taking this stuff and we're combining it together. We're putting a little bit of distortion on the text, adding some camera shake, and running this whole thing through a couple different filters, putting stuff together, and there we go. We have our finished effect right here in the Fusion page. I think a lot of people get caught up in the layers versus nodes debate, but the truth is they're just different versions of the same thing. You're still putting elements one over another and putting on various effects, changing things, masking things. It's all real similar. And me being somebody who's used After Effects for years, my first real paid job was compositing in After Effects. I've done freelance motion graphics. I've worked on graphics in lower thirds for broadcast TV shows and films. I love making things in After Effects, but honestly, after using Fusion, I like making graphics in Fusion even more. There's really everything you need. You can obviously put elements together like this. You can animate elements. You can keyframe stuff and move it around. In the spine panel, you can adjust the easing of the keyframes. You can even do 3D motion graphics right inside of Fusion. And so yeah, you can make some pretty impressive stuff with Fusion if you just give it a shot. And let's take a second and just talk about these elements. These are some animated kind of stop motion elements that I got from a site called Motion Array. Here's how it works. You can search for whatever you're looking for when it comes to elements for your motion graphics. They also have templates, they have sound effects and music and footage and all this stuff. Gritty arrow textures, look at this. You can just throw this on top of your video. These are just ProRes files in 4K. So they have tons of these little just elements that you can drag into Fusion or even just the edit page and spice things up. And you don't even, you don't even have to know a whole lot about how to do it. You can just throw this behind a title and it looks good, it's exciting. It looks like you know a ton about motion graphics, but you can just download a pack of these and have them on your system and then use them for whatever you want. So yeah, I took some of these elements and all I did was just throw it on top of what I already had going on and it's just layering things basically. And we have a really interesting background and I really haven't done a whole lot. So if you wanna check out Motion Array, there is a link in the description that will also help support me and get you a smoking deal on a Motion Array membership. Who we got four more things to go over. This next one's a short one. You can use a mask or really any node to do multiple things inside of Fusion. For instance, here I have these elements and I'm just putting this over my pink background here just as like a layer over my pink background. But I'm also taking this same output and I'm using it as a mask for some other stuff I have going on. So I have my motion graphics text here. And at the beginning, we kind of paint this element on. This is just with an animated mask. And rather than have a separate mask for the text and a separate mask for the paint elements here, I just used those paint elements as a mask for the text. And so if I disconnect this mask here, normally it would look like that, but I can take that and just apply it. And then I only need to control one mask here and it controls multiple things, which is just working smart. We'll have to see what kind of experiments this generates. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's one of the benefits of nodes is you can output a node to as many different places as you want and you can have one node that controls a hundred different things. So exciting. By the way, if you're just getting into Fusion, I highly recommend checking out the Fusion Survival Guide. That is a free video course hosted by yours truly, where we go over the essential tips that are just so important for working in Fusion. You're gonna have such a better time if you just follow these tips. Here's a link right here. You can sign up for free. There's also a link in the description. That's my gift to you. Let's get back to it. Number three, crazy thing you might not know about Fusion. You can make your own tools. It's sort of like making a template, but it's a little bit more customizable uh, kind of in the weeds stuff. Check this out, this is, I, this is so cool. So here I have my text and I want to put this through a displacement map. And what that's doing is just kind of adding this little wobble here. 
And this is a combination of a couple different nodes, the displace node, as well as a fast noise node. If you don't know what fast noise is, it just makes these clouds and we can animate these clouds like this. And depending on the brightness of the clouds, that drives this displacement. And where it's brighter, it kind of pushes the pixels around more. But rather than hook this up like this every time, maybe I want to make a custom tool. Now check this out. All I have to do is select these, right click and go up to macro, create macro. And this gives us this macro tool and it lists out all of the different controls inside of both of these tools. And I can just add a check mark to whichever ones I want to use in my new custom tool. So for instance, for our fast noise, I want to adjust the amount of detail and the scale for our noise. I also want to adjust seethe and seethe rate. Seethe is like how much it changes over time. So I can do that. And then in our displace node, I'll adjust our refraction strength and our offset. And now I've ticked just the boxes that I want to adjust in my new tool. And I can call it something cool. Like, I don't know, maybe turbulent displacement. Yeah. File, save, save. Now check this out. I'll just close this. Now, if I want to take this text and run it through something like that, I can hit shift space bar. That'll bring up my select tools and I can type my custom tool like turbulent turb displacement right there. And I'll hit enter and hit two on the keyboard. And we're running through this, right? Which is just by default, it's kind of doing it this way. But I have all these little sliders here that I can adjust the detail, the scale, the C, the C, the rate offset and refraction strength. And so I can adjust that. And it's all in this nice little interface that's minimal. I can change the detail amount, scale, and make this as wild as I want, all with these little sliders. I can even link up these sliders to each other with expressions and modifiers and stuff. And so I could have one slider that controls 10 different things all at once. I mean, you can get super detailed with this stuff. If you guys want a video on that, let me know. I would love to dive into the weeds of making your own tools in Fusion. It's so much fun. Absolutely. So if something doesn't exist in Fusion, but you can kind of piece it together with several different nodes, you can package those up and make your own little tool. It's freaking so neat. Speaking of making your own tools, that brings us to number four. Of all the things that you can do in Fusion, did you know that you could create a broadcast quality cartoon just in Resolve using Fusion? That's exactly what we did. We created a bunch of our own tools using this exact same process, and we made a template in Fusion for each cartoon character in our cartoon. And we put those templates in the edit page and animated our own cartoon just using the tools inside of DaVinci Resolve. If you guys wanna check out the cartoon and the behind the scenes, there's a link right there. But I think that's pretty crazy, being able to make a cartoon just with the tools inside of Fusion, not having to get any other kind of animation software. We even drew all of the art in Fusion. Super powerful. Exactly. Now for the fifth crazy thing that you can do in Fusion that you might not have known about, particles. Fusion actually has a really robust particle system. So if you've used things like trap code particular or other particle systems, this is really similar and you can do all kinds of stuff with this. They have physics. You can do 2d particles, 3d particles. I have just a couple examples here. Here's a little fireball. Here's an example of like a little smoke plume. Here we have these kind of red streaky lines that are going across. And of course you can make your own elements and stuff like this is a dust element, just some dust particles that I created using this particle system. It took like five minutes and you could render this out and put it over videos or you can just add dust to a clip that's on your timeline, whatever you want to do. But it's a really powerful particle system. And so if one of the things you're worried about is like, oh, I really like trap code particular or I'm really into particles and I don't really know if Fusion can do much with particles. I mean, it is really robust. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with particles in Fusion. So make sure to check that out. There's a lot of documentation on the particles. You can even have things bounce and explode and all this stuff. It's, it's way deeper than I can get into in this video. To Fusion. So there's five things that I think are just bangerang when it comes to Fusion. What, what is something that you think is awesome that I might have missed? What's something that you wish was in Fusion? but is not, let me know in the comments. If you don't know me, my name is Casey and I like to teach Fusion. I wanna teach you how to use Fusion. If you're, if you're into Resolve, baby, this is such a good place for you. If you wanna dive into motion graphics and animation or uh, visual effects, we're gonna be good friends. And again, if you're just getting into Fusion, make sure to check out our Fusion Survival Guide. There's a link right there. That's a free course that will show you the essentials of working in Fusion and some of the major concepts that I think are really important. So check that out. I also have this video right here, which is wonderful. Okay. All right. Cool. Super.
really good and awesome a lot.